Good day and welcome to Let's Talk Art. I am your host, Mrs. Palmer Carroll. Today we have a special guest, Nicholas Rose. We're going to do an interview. We're going to interview the artist today. But before, let me give you an overview. So this lesson is really focused on grade 10 and 11, right? As it relates to how do you interview an artist? We will briefly look at the artist statement and how to analyze a work of art. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we're going to ask Mr. Rose some information about himself. So we're going to start. Now, tell me a little about you. What's your background like? Did you always want to do art? I mean, I find your work very fascinating. Tell me some more. I'm Mr. Nicholas Rose. I'm an artist and an educator. I was born at Spallings Hospital, Manchester, but from that day on, I lived in Albertown, Trelawney. So I was really inspired by everything within my, my landscape. I was raised in a small community, all sides close to Albertown in Trelawney, which is famous for Yam Festival. So I had a lot of landscape around me, um, particular farming environment. And I really just used to draw from a young age. I used to draw the caricature Im images on the farmer's almanac and until I eventually started to just cover blank pages with, with, with marks. So you're saying that from a child, how old? From as young as I can remember. You started drawing? I was drawing. So from then you knew that you wanted to be an artist or an educator? Well, at that point, I really did not know, I think at that young age, but just going through, you know, the, the different channels, mm -hmm. going through um, church and school there in Trelawney, I, I always gravitate to doing art things. And then after, you know, leaving primary school at age 10, I went to the Cartwright College in Mandeville, which, you know, sort of gave me that first formal training about art where I met a lovely teacher, Miss Valerie Chutkan. And there I got my first exposure to, you know, going to an art exhibition and so on. But so um, before you continue, so yes. your teacher then um, was very important, was a significant figure in you wanting to pursue a career in art. Definitely. Very good. She really helped me to, well, she showed me that I had it in me, you know. And, I, and she always pressed me to say, Nicholas, you can do better. And that really gave me the drive to improve and to upgrade you know, the standard of work that I was doing. Very good. Now, another question. What does your work aim to say? So I know you spoke about, I mean, Yam Festival and you know, the surroundings, you know, the greenery. But what does your work aim to say? Well, my, my work aimed to be the voice for the voiceless. The thing is going to Mandeville, you know, to, to school, going, making all sorts of travels to Kingston overseas. I have never really seen much of my, um, my, my, my hometown in the galleries or in paintings. You know, it's normally some flamboyant images and, you know, a lot of landscape and so on. So, what I started to do was sort of capture these domestic workers. Like one of my paintings, Miss Beryl, is, is a lady that comes and washes my clothes from when I was a baby. You know, so you painted her? I painted her. Do you have a picture of, um, of Miss Beryl? Yes, I do. Okay. And you can view? Uh, right, so good. Yes. So we'll take a look at that picture. Very good. Yes. And when did you do that? When did you paint that? I did that painting somewhere about 2014 or 15. Does your work comment on political or social issues? Do you point that out in your artwork any at all? I definitely do. Okay. Um, I think my work is about a range of things, really. The things that affect not just myself, but um, you know, everyone within this, this, this country, in this global space. And, and most definitely social and political issues are always raised. Mm -hmm. um, I believe one of the work that really made a big impact was a work I did called Jamaica 50. Oh. It was entitled Political Landscaping. 
-hmm. And it was really when, you know, we were celebrating as a country 50 years of independence. And, you know, all the highlights were about you saying Bolt or Bob Marley. And I'm saying, you know, what did, did you know, the government or we as a country really do for them? Those, those are persons who were intrinsically motivated and worked towards these, their goals and really excelled on a global platform. So I, I did that piece to really show um, that the landscape isn't as pretty as it is, but mm -hmm. really and truly, um, it's on us as individuals. The onus on, is on us to really push and to excel. So I did. I do several works. Um, even my now recent series I'm working on is about um, climate justice, like is the whole any, issue. No? So. The, this, these are two pieces. This one is called Cockpit Country, mm -hmm. um, Washing Day. This one is another one, Work in Progress. But what happened is I was a bit disturbed at the discussion, you know, some time ago about mining in the, the, the cockpit country, okay. which is, you know, our treasured landmark and so on. So I decided to do a body of work um, with some small paintings because I normally work very large. Okay. So I. What's the largest you ever done? A, a work, a painting. I've painted on tarpaulin, mm -hmm. for instance, okay. this Trelawney entitled Winji. That's the original is on a six by eight feet tarpaulin. Mm -hmm. So this is just a print that I sent to an exhibition in uh, Europe. How do you find like um, the material that you work with? So canvas um, versus fabric versus fabric cardboard versus tarpaulin. How, how do you handle that in the painting? Is it difficult? It can be difficult because really and truly, although we're artists and we're, we tend to be familiar with some material, there, there, there may be different factors that can really affect how the material responds. Mm -hmm. Could be the, the climate, the fact that the time it's is important. cold, you know, maybe a painting won't dry as how it would dry in the summer. And really, painting on tarpaulin, that was a very tricky one. So what happened, I actually did a school mural project. It was um, a collaboration between the school I teach at, along with a school in Japan. And wow. they had sent a canvas material that was very plastic based, mm -hmm. you know, based. So what happened, there was some leftover paint from that project so and I incorporated on the tarpaulin and I realized that it, it was working. Very but even innovative. after that, I, I tried some of our local oil paint and it was stripping. So it's, it's, yeah. it's tricky, but then it's, it's a process and it, it, in, it entails research, right. it entails practice. And, and that is important. So I, I like the mere fact that you said research. Yes. So if somebody is doing the art or visual arts, they need to understand that they must research. So must. just like what you did, you did your research, you realized that, okay, so our local paint that we have here, it doesn't really work well with the tarpaulin because it strips after a while. Correct. But yet still, the paint that you got from, what was the country Japan. again? Japan. Japan. Yes. And you realize that it works very well with the tarpaulin. Yes, it So did. art takes in research, and that is very important. It leads me to another question, influence. Right, so is there any artists out there or any style of painting that really influence your style? Definitely. Um, in terms of my style, I, 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 I focus a lot on drawing, mm -hmm. right? Because I am passionate about that, but I, I'm, I consider myself a very all-rounded artist. So I'm multidisciplinary, you know? I can, I, sometimes I'll fuse even sculpture, ceramics into my pieces. Very good. Um, in a recent project I did, Project 119, we actually incorporated some ceramic pieces. But the influence, really, the global sort of, or the biggest influence is probably Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. He's, it's a bit cliche to mention his name, but I think <laughs> he's very rounded. Yes just as myself, you know, from high school, I, I sort of considered myself as an inventor. I tried to Very be good. different. I always tried to add new approaches. Um, separate from that, there are several other influences, of course, because on the international basis, 
likewise there is Rembrandt that I did a lot of studies on to, to really look at how light and darkness really create impact. There are several other artists that I have to mention because that's a tricky question. You can't just single out. So there is the, the, the YMBA, which is Young British Artist mm -hmm. Movement. That's sort of my time with young artists like Jenny Savelle, Damien Hertz, who did some remarkable things to change the art world. Locally, of course, I can't <laughs> leave out Barrington Watson. You know, That's he it. changed my life. I met him, you know, in the latter part of his, his life when he did his retrospect 2012 was remarkable and he made me become very focused and serious on what I'm doing. So I'm guessing that not just one person would have influenced you, but no. a wide cross section of persons using different styles, you know, yes. and different media also would have influenced your work. Very good. Um, so you talk about international. Now, have you traveled any at all? Have you done any exhibition? Where has art, your love, where has it taken you? Ah, it, it has taken me all over. Um, I, I, I covered, I pretty much did most of the ex exhibition or competitions in Jamaica. Very good. And then following that, the first um, international show was in Dallas, Texas in mm -hmm. 2015. And you mounted exhi an exhibition there? I did a group show. Okay. It was at um, Gallery 550, which was remarkable. Met some fantastic artists who are, you know, top artists in their countries. Um, following that, I also entered an exhibition in the UK. I did mm -hmm. two um, showing in the UK, and then from there, I also did a show in Venice, in Italy. Wow. And the, the so the one in Italy, was it solo or? It was, it was a group show. Okay, it was good. also a group show. Um, I think one of the, you know, the most fantastic international opportunity was also to share my work at the Brooklyn Museum. Um, I met Sherry, Sh um, Shelley Worrell, who is mm -hmm. um, a brilliant person who, as a Caribbean movement, Caribbean. So that's the organization, just looking at Caribbean artists, you know, tra who travel the world. And I did a, a lovely talk with um, a, a very big artist there who goes by the name bon Bundle House. And it was, um, you know, the talk was moderated by Nicole from um, the New York Times. So that was a very fantastic opportunity. So I'm seeing where art is, is really taking you places. Definitely. You so another question, another important question, as I know a young and upcoming artist, you know, probably those in high school want to find out, do you make money from art? Because, you know, parents will tell a child that you're not going to make any money from art. Art is basically a hobby. But here you are, you're a teacher, and you are also an artist. But yes. separate apart from you know the salary that you get as a teacher, do you make money from your art? I definitely make money from my art. I am fairly young, and I own a car. I own my own <laughs> house. That speaks volume to you know the the seriousness of art and what it can really you know help you to earn. So I do make money. It's the really how you position yourself. Mm -hmm and the, the people you position yourself with and the places where you show your art. There is, you know, a popular story about really, about the stone, you know, bringing it to um, a corner shop or bringing it to a history museum, the value is different, mm -hmm. you know? So I've positioned myself in places where my works are valued. And I also do a variety of work, so I don't limit myself. A lot of artists and even art teachers limit themselves mm -hmm. to say, oh, I'm just going to do painting. No, I did painting, I, I've done ceramics, I majored in textiles and fashion, so I design wow. at times, definitely. Good. I do digital arts, so I'm mm -hmm. currently working on a, on a book, mm -hmm. and that's a national project which you'll hear wow. about soon. Interesting. I'm collaborating with another artist. So I do digital arts. I've done a little 2D animation. So Very I've good. made myself rounded marketable. and marketable. Yes. Very good. So I'm going to ask you, this is a good tricky question. No, can you give me a little idea, you know, a, a range of, of a pricing for probably our artwork that you'd have sold? Just give me a little range between this amount and, and that amount. All right. Um, Without giving to, away too much. <laughs> 
to, to just give a range, I would say over a hundred thousand okay. dollars. Jamaican dollars. Jamaican dollars, <laughs> you know, and I have works that value more. And the, the thing about art, which I really have to speak about, I don't really encourage persons to press the sell the work because art is 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 a luxury. It's like wine. It, it's it, so wait, wait, the wait, value wait, grows wait, with wait, time. Wait, wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you say you're not going to impress on persons to sell their work? No, not to just sell it to any and everybody or just... But somebody might argue, I want a piece of artwork and I'm going to pay for it. Why would you not sell me that artwork? Well, let me step back a little. Mm -hmm. Not to be hasty to sell your work for or undervalue your work okay. or sell All it. Right. For right. what you know, right. you know, right. you can right. get right. more for. So right. that that's that's the thing because I think in Jamaica, oftentimes, a lot of persons just sell the work on some knee jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody sees something a potential in the work, he sell it, and I know a lot of artists, art teachers who are regretful, saying mm -hmm. that you know they sold their work for X and they, they gave it really, away. They gave, they it, gave it, it away. away. All right, probably you made that mistake once. I don't think you know somebody would make that mistake twice. You know, because it happens to the best of us. You it, know? it does, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, I, I can say it had happened to me also. Mm -hmm. Because I think what we're really lacking in the local scene is, is art managers. Mm -hmm. We have art managers for like the musician, but we don't have much for visual arts. Very good, so, very good. And you know that persons can actually study that, you know, they study yes. art management, right? So that is another category that they can go into, another branch of art that they can also go Definitely. into. Definitely. We need more of that locally. Good. So it leads me to probably my final question as it relates to the, the interview. Now, um, do you influence, you find out that you, you have influence on your students? Because you mentioned that you're a teacher. Um, so do you have influence on your students? You realize that your art comes out, um, that they do an example as it relates to, or oh, their art is similar to yours. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if I can say if they're similar to mine, mm -hmm. but I've seen the impact or, or influence in that they are far more receptive okay. to new ideas. Mm -hmm. they're, they're far more assertive to production. There is there's a, a great passion for art. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I mean, when I'm at school, there. I have to tell students to go and get lunch okay, because, because they don't the want to leave the art room. And good. you know, I had. And you know, it's therapeutic, though. It it's is very therapeutic. It is therapeutic, mm -hmm. and a lot of them oftentimes tell you that's where, that's their escape. Yes. That's little, where they get their. Little their haven. That's their safe mm -hmm. haven. A lot of them yes. say that, and I think that really drove me to to start Enrose Art Studio, which wow. is tell me more. an official studio that I've started where I, I it initiated with a collaboration with some of my students. Very we good. did a studio project called Project 119 mm -hmm. at the Olympia Art Gallery wow. here in Kingston, which is a major yes, move. Yes, I saw that. I so I had a more. lovely bunch of students, I have to mention their name, <laughs> you know, there, there's Georgia, there was um, Javon Turner, Odin Bennett, Fisher, there was Lexi, Said. Um, I hope I don't leave out anybody, but that was a lovely bunch of students that after they finished their exams mm -hmm. or their SBAs, they, I said, listen, I have this show I want to do. Are you in? They said, yes, sir. And we just started working for that entire summer. Very so good. I have to applaud them, applaud their families who Very were good. there to support also. And we did something big and we planned and we hope that we can have a next staging of this mm -hmm. exhibition because I know it needs more attraction, more attention. So okay. we're working on that and also some other projects. So any of your students, um, would they would have gone on to pursue further studies in art? Definitely. Okay. I, I can, I don't want to brag, but I can boldly say that <laughs> all of them are in the field of art. Very and good. I mean, like Odin is a, won a scholarship to UWE where he's studying criminal animation. Wow. You know, when I saw him on TV, I was, I felt really good. Very good. I don't even know about that, you know, <laughs> feel, but, you know, uh -huh. that was something good. And, and, and this is it. So you, you need to understand that being an artist, you don't necessarily have to do your painting and your drawing alone. No. And here you're saying somebody doing 
cr I mean, criminal animation. Correct. You understand? And then you have art management. There's so many areas out there. So we're just encouraging students just to research. So if you have a genuine love for visual arts, then pursue it. Definitely. You understand? So like here in front of me, I have a visual arts teacher and an artist who would have traveled, can I say the world? Yes. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> to some degree. Showcasing what you love. Definitely. You understand? What more do you want than to the love something and that is your job. You understand? True. It feels as if you're on vacation every day. True. Put it that way. True. All right? So, Mr. Rose, I want to thank you for talking to me. But before you go, I, we want to show the students now how do they critique a work of art. Because you know for their reflective journal, yes. they have to critique a work of art. Yes. You understand? So, we're going to, you know, walk them through how to do that. So, we're going to look at, at this one. In analyzing a work of art, there are four stages, okay? We describe, we analyze, we interpret, and we judge. We describe, analyze, interpret, and judge. So we're only going to focus on one area today, and that area is description, all right? Basically, you're telling me what you see in your artwork, okay? So I'm going to ask Mr. Nicholas Rose, right, to tell me the palette that he used. To describe his artwork, right? Probably the title of it, you know, um, what style of painting is it, etc. So he's going to describe that for me. So you can have an idea how to describe a work of art. Over to you. Okay, thanks for that. So the first thing um, in description is subject matter. I am focusing, yes, there's a landscape, but there are figures. There are three female figures. There is, there are objects which are bath, bath pans which they wash in that are on their heads with clothes in it. Um, there are a few plants at the bottom of the painting and in the background you can see um, faded or a misty background of trees and so on. Um, the next thing is, is we know the art form already, we know it's a painting. The, the style, when you look, you'll see heavy brush strokes. There are elements that you can identify which makes you believe it's realistic or realism, but it's actually impressionism. So what I use is brush strokes, just to heavy brush strokes to capture the moment or the essence of what's taking place within the cockpit country when ladies go to the river to wash, right? Um, we can go forward to background, we can really tell that, you know, it's a country background or, well, but in description, we're not assuming, we can just state it's that, exactly just state what, what we see based on the background that it, um, it's, 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 we don't even want to say Caribbean, but it's nature, nature. An impression uh, of, so an impression it's, of it's not necessarily realism, straight? Yes. So you're, there's a hint of impressionism Correct. that you're saying. Okay, so students must not say that I like or I don't like, right? You yes. need to go in depth and say, just like what Mr. Rose did, and he's talking about what he's seen on the canvas. So the woman, what they're doing, etc., greenery, and the mere fact that they're in water, right? What appears to be water, all right? So what's the difference now with the brush stroke in this one? And uh, what's the title of this one? It's Cockpit Aesthetics. And this was painted in? To 2019. All right. So the, the brush strokes, and what's the difference with the brush strokes? And this one, this, this looks like you. Uh, can I say a younger version of you? Yes. A handsome <laughs> version of you. All right. So what's the difference with, with the brush stroke? Is, is, is this impressionism or is, just, is it straight realism? All right. This work now is more realism. Mm -hmm. It was a work I did while, you know, at the Michael, right. where I was doing a self-portrait and I was looking at Rembrandt, who is sort of recognized as the master of light and dark in paintings. Okay, I was also very much influenced by Mr. Ewan Peart mm -hmm. and uh, you know my history teacher Miss 
Mrs. Stewart okay. and uh, Miss Graham. There were a lot of influence there that you know sort of helped me to research, and then I really want to capture that realistic impression. And I think at that age we normally aim for that. Very good. But the latter works you now were a sort of different palette or different color because. I'm now searching to find my identity and my local sort of mm -hmm. aesthetics. So I... Well, before you go there, yes. since we're talking about description, somebody might say, how do I describe, I mean, this? Because all I'm seeing is um, a person. So what, what, what would I write? Well, there are some very um, straightforward elements. I mentioned some like the subject matter. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the style which you can um, speak to. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the background. I didn't mention form in the, the one above, which yeah. is speaking to the elements and principles that mm -hmm. govern art. We can speak about the different lines. We can talk about the light, right? We can talk about you know the value, the emphasis. You can see that there was a lot of emphasis on the body mm -hmm. through lighting to make it look muscular and robust. You what can would we talk about? Talk the about the, 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 okay. the clothes, mm -hmm. um, the beaded right. necklace. You know, very good. The background, even the background, you can mention to mm -hmm. say that you are seeing co colors. There, there, there. It, the background is dark, but there are still some colors sort of radiating through the background. You can make mention of them. Okay, to say there good. are reds, or there are blues, there are greens in the background, you mention or state all of what you see. Okay, so in recapping, we're saying that for description, we don't say we like or we don't like. We no. go more in depth and we say exactly what we see, talk about the artist who painted it, the year that the, art, the, the, the work was done. Correct. All right. Um, we look on probably the style of painting that they would have looked at, right? And we look at the color palette Definitely. also. All right. All right. So there's one other thing that, you know, we can point out in the painting yeah. and uh, um, it's the background. So there are three levels in a painting. You have the foreground, correct? And um, you have the middle ground and you also have the, the background. All right. So foreground, middle ground, and background. So you're going to say, the students now will say, what is in the foreground? And this is most what is to the front. What is in the middle ground? And what is in the background, right? So for this one, the background would be the impression of um, greenery, so to speak. Um, the middle ground now would be the woman that you're seeing there. It's, it's almost closer up to the foreground, but it's also um, some one or two of the women would be also in the background. All right, so they need to focus on that. The foreground, the middle ground, and the background. And also, if you're using different rules, so for example, there's one that is also the rule of thirds, yes. right? So the paintings that you'd have used here would, would be an example of you using um, the rule of thirds, okay? Yeah. So um, your paintings are, they're very interesting. I really like them. Um, Thank you. It, they're very interesting and you would have gone places and I really like that um, and also another thing that the students need to be able to do is an artist statement right so in interviewing uh, Mr. Rose a while ago we were able to you know get some information about him about the type of work that he's doing so that will also help you to write your artist statement so what I'm going to do is just read quickly about five questions that you can answer in doing your artist statement, okay? So the first one, why do you make this type of art? Mr. Rose would have answered that, correct? Yes. Right. Now, what does your artwork represent? And he would have also answered that question, right? Who inspires you? And of course, Mr. Rose, you did answer that. You yes. Remember, you were telling me about your teacher, I mean, your environment, etc. So who or what inspires you? And these are just an example of questions that you can use to write your artist statement. Um, another question is, how do you make your work? How do you create your artwork, right? And what does your art mean to you? So these are just some examples of five questions that you can answer in writing your artist statement. And in the interview a while ago, Mr. Rose would have answered those. Now, Mr. Rose, I want to thank you so much for coming. I'm hoping that you can join me next time 
when we look at how to analyze a work of art, how to I mean, interpret a work of art, and how to evaluate a work of art, and how we'll use uh, the paintings that we started with a while ago. So Mr. Rose, I just want to shake I'd, your hand. Thank you very much for having me, and, and, and I'm very grateful. I'm very honored to, to be a part of you know, this program. And definitely, if you know, students want to see more, there is an official website, it's nroseartstudio.com. And it's the same Enrose Art Studio on all the social media handles. So it's on Pinterest, it's on Facebook, Instagram, all of those social media, Enrose Art Studio. And also on YouTube, I started a YouTube channel with several series and also on the website there's a blog page so please go and follow and you will be up to date with all that's happening with my work and where it's going all right so until next time see you <laughs>